Hi guys, and thanks for tuning in. Today, what I'm gonna be doing is some bird photography with my Nikon Z7. Now I've had the Z7 for about six months. It's not really known as a camera you use for bird photography. I actually bought this camera specifically for landscape photography. But after having it for six months, I've got out and I've paired it up with my 80 to 400 mm lens with the FTZ2 adapter. I am quite surprised at some of the results I'm getting. And that's what I'm gonna do with today's video. I'm just gonna show you what happens when I do bird photography with the Nikon Z7. Today I'm visiting a nature reserve not too far from my home here in Queensland, Australia. I've actually been here before with my Nikon D850 and I'll leave that video at the top of the screen for you to check out a little bit later on. I'm always happy with the amount of bird species I find here, but today, well, it's slim pickings by the looks. At this nature reserve, normally there are a ton of birds, but today for some reason, there are some, but not as many as there are normally. I would put that down to recently we had all these floods here. So a lot of the water birds that frequent these areas, I think a lot of their homes and everything have been washed out to the ocean. In fact, I think a lot of them, their last sighting was they were sailing past Fiji. Got a heron over here. Just walking out into the sunlight. Just single point autofocus, straight on top of his head. And he's got something, just a bit of a stick in his mouth. I just want to talk about some of the advantages of using the Z7 for bird photography compared to say my Nikon D850. First of all, the obvious one. It is a ton lighter. Uh, makes it much more an, an enjoyable experience being able to walk long distances and not have your arms breaking in about two hours time. The other one is, uh, I love the fact, especially when I'm making videos for you guys, is that I can just at the flip of a switch with my thumb, I can flip it over into video. And especially when I'm shooting in HD slow-mo, that gives me a one and a half crop. So that turns that 400 into 600 mil. I can look through the viewfinder and still be recording video. Whereas with the D850, I've got to kind of like awkwardly hold it up with the back screen type of thing. So that saves my arms and it also becomes more steadier. The other thing I should mention too, when doing video with the Z7, I get some form of image stabilization. Now it's not the full five stops using something like a Z lens. Instead, what I get is three stops of image stabilization. It's not much, but at least it is something compared to say the D850. In terms of disadvantages with the Z7, the thing I love about my D850 is how I can program all the different focus modes into different buttons on that camera. And I have made a video on that and I'll leave that up here that you can have a look at a little bit later on. But you know, personally for me, I still prefer using my Nikon D850. Um, the Z7 is good, but I don't know, there is something about the images. Sorry about the plane flying over. There is something about the images out of the D850 that I really love compared to the images out of the Z7. It's a weird thing, I know they've got the same sensor. It's just something about the colors coming out of the D850 that I really, really love. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just switched over and I'm just doing a bit of B-roll for you guys. This is at 400 mil with the one and a half crop at full HD. Now, you'll see my hands, I've got them just near my focus ring because inside the viewfinder, I've actually got my focus peaking turned on. So if I need to make any sort of little micro adjustments with the focus, I can just quickly move it around like that. So I can follow this little bird around the bank. You know, this has actually surprised me. At a pinch, you can capture birds uh, in their environment, if they're slow moving, if they're sitting on a branch. In terms of birds in flight, it really is kind of like a hit and miss type of thing. I would probably equate it to, say, going to a salmon farm with a casting net and a spear. <laughs> with the casting net, it would be like going with a Sony A1 or a Canon R5. When you throw that casting net in, you'll get a whole bunch. But with this, the Z7, it's kind of like the equivalent of getting a spear and throwing it into the water. Eventually, you'll jag one. I then decided to move to another park where I found a better variety of birds, including rainbow lorikeets and yellow-tailed black cockatoos. Even some butterflies making their ways through some long strands of grass. You can see in some of these Z7 photos, the pics look okay, but what you need to see is how many shots I had to take to eventually get one in focus. Yep, just like that spear at the salmon farm, I jagged a butterfly mid-flight and a rainbow lorikeet taking to the air. I doubt it was anything to do with the camera's focusing ability, more so the butterfly and lorikeet flew into where the lens was focused at the precise moment I hit the shutter. This compared to the D850, I know after using that camera for years, I would have got those shots a lot more easily. When it comes to comparing both the Z7 and D850 for bird photography, I found that the Z7 is sometimes actually too sharp for its own good. Besides the bluish colour cast of the images, you have to be extremely accurate when using things like single point and wide area small focus settings. Whereas with the D850, I'm able to select a focus setting that I've programmed into either the back or front buttons and within a second, I can capture shots whether the bird is flying, swimming, diving, or sitting on a branch. Well guys, it's come to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I had a little bit of fun with the Z7 today doing some bird photography. I wouldn't really rely on it too much for those fast birds in flight, maybe a very slow loping bird, something like an eagle that's gliding in the wind, but not for those really fast swallows darting over water or anything like that. As I always say, never stop creating, and I'll see you next time.